Hey, this is Jonathan Bukhara for Fluent C++. Today we're going to talk about naming. Sometimes it's hard to find just the right name and we're going to see one technique to find a good name for something in code. This technique consists in asking the right question. I'm going to give you the right question right now. It is, what does this represent? What does this thing I'm trying to name, that variable, that function, that class, that interface, what does it represent? You may think, well, yeah, that's what I'm after. But it's actually a very precise question, and it means something very specific. There are things that it doesn't mean. Let's get into that. It comes down to respecting levels of abstraction. What do I mean by levels of abstraction? Well, it shows easily in a call stack. So in a call stack, You've got functions that call each other, and at a given level of the call stack, you've got the name of the function that says what it does. To get to a lower abstraction level, it's something that's called by that function, and to get to that lower level, you answer the question, how is it implemented? Conversely, to get to a higher level of abstraction, the question to ask is, in what context? is my thing used. So the level of abstraction of something is what it represents, the level below it is how it's implemented, and the level above it is in what context is that used. The right name for something is the right level of abstraction for so what it represents, not how it's implemented or in what context is it used. Let's see how that can look like in code. We're going to see an example of a collection of balls of various colors. So we have a class that represents a ball and this ball has a color that can be either black, blue, green, or orange, whatever. Now let's create a collection of balls. There we are. Now let's find the first ball in that bag of balls that has the color green. Okay, what comes out of find if is an iterator that points to the first ball in the bag of balls that has color green. Now the question is, what's the right name for that thing that comes out of findeth? One possibility would be to call it it or iter or iterator because it's an iterator. But if we think back to the right question to find the right name, which is what it represents, the thing does not represent an iterator. It's actually implemented as an iterator, but we don't care about that. What we care about is what it represents, and what it represents is the first ball that has color green. So let's give it a better name. First green ball. That was an example of not choosing a name that has too low a level of abstraction. Now let's see an example of a name that could be too high in terms of levels of abstraction. In this example, we're going to consider a book that has a new revision and would like to know how bigger the new revision is. Say that we are comparing number of pages, for example. So let's create a function that returns the ratio of the new book compared to the old book. That looks okay. And later on, imagine we've got a new requirement to compare the size of a fiction novel versus an encyclopedia. We feel like we can reuse our get ratio function, except that the parameters don't make sense because we like to compare the novel with the encyclopedia and neither one is old or new, they're just two different books. This shows that this first attempt of naming these parameters, old book and new book, are tied 
the context of the old version and new version of a book. To be able to reuse that with a novel and an encyclopedia, what we're doing is actually comparing two books and one of them is the reference. So let's call them this way. One is the reference book and the other one is just the book we are comparing it to. That's a fairly simple example, but it is to illustrate that a good name does not depend on the context it's being used. So one last thing. It's actually pretty hard to come up with the right name on the first trial, particularly a name that says what it represents and not in what context it's used. In the example of the function's parameters, when you first write a function parameters, you may give a name to those parameters and you may be influenced by the context where your function is being used. When you've got a new context where your function is used, then you've got new information about how your function is used and what it is exactly. When you have that new context, I want you to go back and think about the names of your parameters. Make sure that they fit in all contexts. If they fit in one context and not in another one, it means that the name is coupled to a context and you don't want that because that's too high an abstraction level. The right name for a function is the one that fits in all contexts and one that doesn't show how it's implemented. If you like this video, you can subscribe to the channel and put a thumb up. Thank you and I see you next time.